Uh, truly pleased to have the opportunity to introduce uh, Dr. Pierluigi uh, Moroni this morning. Uh, Dr. Moroni is a professor of internal medicine and rheumatology and the head of the division of rheumatology at the University of Milan in Italy. He graduated from the University of Milan Medical School and has training in internal medicine and clinical immunology. Dr. Moroni is the director of immunorheumatology research laboratory and director of the postgraduate school in allergy and clinical immunology and of the school of rheumatology at the University of Milan. His clinical and scientific work has been focused mainly on autoimmune rheumatic diseases. In particular, he investigated the pathogenic mechanisms responsible for lupus and antiphospholipid syndrome. Dr. Moroni has been deeply involved in the standardization of the diagnostic tests for rheumatic diseases and has chaired the Euler Task Force for the guidelines for diagnostic laboratory tests in autoimmune rheumatic diseases. He also started the first pregnancy clinic for caring for pregnant women with systemic autoimmune diseases in Milan. We're thrilled to have the opportunity to hear from Dr. Moroni this morning for his talk, Antiphospholipid Syndrome, Latest News from Milan. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Um, it's a pleasure to, to speak with all of you, with very old friend. And um, what I wanted to do today is just to start from some uh, uh, clinical case, uh, which can be informative uh, because uh, they raised some issues uh, that were a little bit uh, difficult to be solved. So I have no disclosures. Uh, I would like to start uh, with the classification criteria. Uh, I have on my desktop uh, Doru Kerk. I know that he is working very hard uh, with the uh, updating of the classification criteria because uh, these are actually very old, uh, published uh, almost uh, in 2006. And uh, uh, such a classification criteria for IPS, uh, of course, uh, requires uh, one clinical criterion the vascular event or the pregnancy morbidity, plus uh, uh, one laboratory criteria. And we have uh, three types uh, of uh, formal uh, classification laboratory assays, two solid phase assays, the anticardioliping and the anti-beta-2 glycoprotein 1, and the functional assay, the lupus, the so-called lupus anticoagulant. We need to have just uh, one of these three assays positive, together with a clinical criteria, one cl clinical criterion to, uh, to be allowed to make the diagnosis. The other point uh, is that uh, uh, I would like to remind you that uh, APL is a sort of a risk factor, a little bit different from other autoantibodies we are used to. Um, higher is the, the title of uh, these antibodies in the solid phase assay. Um, uh, the double of the triple positivity in the formal classification laboratory assays um, represent uh, the highest risk for developing the clinical manifestations. However, um, the, the final risk profile for a given patient is also supported by the presence of other traditional thrombotic risk factors and uh, frequently by an underlying autoimmune disease, in particular whether uh, if this disease is a systemic inflammatory disease such as uh, systemic lupus erythematosus. More or less the same is also true for the obstetric variant of the APS. So we need a lot of antibodies. Uh, we need uh, to, to take into account the previous obstetric history, the presence of additional traditional obstetric risk factor and the um, possible presence of an underlying autoimmune disease. Having said that, uh, this is what uh, is formally accepted. But in the real life, uh, we have to, uh, to cope with some uh, uh, variables. And uh, the clinical cases that I'm going to discuss with you uh, could represent some of these, uh, let me say, exception to the 